What is going on everyone? It's Mike and welcome back to Tech 24 seven TV where we bring you the best unboxing and product reviews so you can make informed buying decisions. Now here on this channel, we're gonna analyze the various bits and bytes that transcend technology that only find their way into your pocket. So if you like hands-on product review videos, just like this Note 10 video that you're watching right now, make sure you're subscribed with notifications so you could see all future content plus the Note 10 Plus full review, plus the Note 10 Plus full review, which is a lot of pluses in there. I've been using the Note 10 Plus for about the past two weeks here, and no jokes aside, I've got some serious feeling towards this device. Now, not in a bad way either. I am genuinely surprised just how much I like this phone. This really makes sense because so many other people like the Note series of devices. And if you're anything like me, you might consider yourself just a little bit of a productivity nerd, meaning that you like to get things done when you're on the phone, and this is probably one of the key reasons why you choose the Note 10 Plus. Now, I like being able to multitask between two different apps on the large 6.8 screen or at the opposite end of the spectrum. That screen is beautiful to game on, you know, maybe play a little bit of Asphalt Racing 9 before you go to bed. And by now and then, I clearly mean every night. Now, I feel that this phone is targeted squarely towards individuals who really want to maximize the time they spend on the device so they can minimize the distractions when they're in the real world, because that's what we all want to do. We want to be present. And that is exactly what this device really enables you to do. From a fit and finish perspective, Samsung has not skipped a beat with the build quality on the Note 10 Plus, and it feels every bit as premium as the high price tag suggests. To the speaker grill and charging port, which are aligned along the bottom of the phone, to the machine glass edges of the device, really the device looks and feels luxurious. Historically speaking, the Note series devices have been engineered with the power user in mind, and they've been designed with very few compromises. Now, for the most part, I feel that the Note 10 really continues to deliver on that tradition. The version that I have here is the US model. It runs the Snapdragon 855 octa-core processor from Qualcomm, really which is the top of the line processor that they have today. Now it comes standard with 12 gigs of RAM and it's not something where you can choose to upgrade the RAM at point of sales like they did with the S10. Now the standard Note 10 configuration comes with 256 gigs of internal storage and there's an option for an extra hundred bucks to go ahead and double it to 512. That in addition to being able to add up to one terabyte of external storage through the SD card makes the Note 10 Plus ideal for many power users. Now I've never used a Note for any considerable amount of time, but the very first thing that I noticed is just how great the display looks. The Note 10 Plus has a 6.8 inch AMOLED panel that runs at a 3040 by 1440 resolution with a beautiful 498 pixels per inch. Now, if it's not obvious from the B-roll, the screen to body ratio on the Note 10 Plus is ridiculous. Technically, the number of pixels per inch is a downgrade from last year's Note 9, but the display on this year is probably the best panel I've seen across any device. One of the things I really appreciate is that I don't have the same XL screen presses on the Note 10 Plus that I had with the S10 Plus, specifically when holding the phone in landscape or portrait mode, my fingers kind of wrapped around the display and it always created some accidental key press and I was doing things that I really didn't want to do on the device. One of the outcomes here is it seems like Samsung is getting better at unintentional fingerprint rejection. Now let me know if you're experiencing the same thing with your Note device, but I think it's actually getting pretty good. The front and the back of the Note 10 are going to be Gorilla Glass 6, hopefully which translates into better drop and scratch protection for people like you and me. Now Samsung does include the screen protector on the device, but somehow I already managed to get a mark on the screen that's really barely noticeable unless you really look for it. I can see it, it just screams at me. Now on a day-to-day -day basis, I thoroughly enjoy using the S Pen to navigate around the Note 10 Plus, opposed to using my finger, and the OCR works really well even though I don't have the best handwriting. Now as for One UI, if this is your first experience using One UI, it's better than TouchWiz because it's organized more logically and makes much sense, but there are a few spots where One UI feels a little too extra for my liking, which is why I'm running the Nova Launcher. Now the Note 10 battery has a 4300 milliamp hour battery. Now if you don't know what that is, that really means one, it's really big, Two, it's gonna last you all day, and three, it's gonna charge very quickly using the included fast charger. Now, I took my phone off the charger today at 8 a.m., got to sleep in a little bit, and right now it's at 89% and it's two o'clock. As for the cameras, they're the same triple camera system that's gonna be found in the S10 Plus. On the back, there's gonna be the additional two cameras that are used for depth sensing. Now, the 16 megapixel camera ultra wide, the 12 megapixel wide, and the 12 megapixel tele are going to produce crispy photos and video even in their alignment with other flagship devices. They look largely like photos that come from a Samsung device. You know, it's going to have good contrast, it's going to be, tend to be on the bright side, and it's going to have good color separation. New in the Note 10 Plus this year is going to be Night Sight. Now, it is good, but it's not like Pixel 3 good, if you know what I'm saying. The live video effects, which were kind of one of the things that Samsung showed off on stage, are goofy and really haven't performed well, in my opinion, and they don't add a significant amount of value to the overall phone. I really hope Samsung continues to work on this and kind of refine these effects, maybe even adding some new ones through future software releases. Now, the last thing that some current Note owners are up in arms about is really the headphone jack. What are we gonna do? There's no headphone jack. I really don't mind that Samsung removed the headphone jack from the device because I can count on one hand how many times I've used a headphone jack in the past year. It's not really that big of a deal. From being brand new to the Note, my perspective is that the Note 10 Plus does have a couple compromises, which really you'll really need to examine at the end of the day to figure out whether or not the Note is gonna be the right device for you. 
Now, first and foremost, it's the in-screen fingerprint reader. It is painfully slow, and that really appears to be tied to the uh, fade-in animation that Samsung has in place. Now, that might be by design because there's some kind of hardware limitation in the component chain, but the delay with getting to the home screen after I scan my fingerprint is really annoying. And if you're anything like me, you probably unlock your device at least a dozen or more so times a day, which only further emphasize how frustrating it is because one, you're doing it so often, and two, when you consider the premium price tag that it commands. Hopefully this is something that Samsung can refine with software updates over time because the animations are almost a deal breaker for me. And yes, I completely understand that there are faster ways of unlocking the device, but those are not necessarily options for me. Second, and maybe not as serious for some people, there is a slight rattle and distortion when using the stereo speakers above maybe say 60 or 70% volume. Now I notice this when I'm on a conference call for work, which I do several times a day, and the phone is on speaker or and the call is on speaker. That or if you're listening to music or maybe watching a video on YouTube. Now while the latter can be a little bit nitpicky, the very first issue could be a deal breaker as I said for some people. If I was looking for a new device and the Note 10 was in my consideration pool, I would say what's the cost of the Note 10 in comparison to the competition, and then how does the device perform relative to its competition? Existing Note owner, you know, Note 9 and below, personally speaking, I feel like Samsung created too much tension between the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus because they put all the valuable features that you as a Note owner, right, are accustomed to in the more expensive device. So realistically speaking, they're practically compelling you to spend more money on the Note 10 Plus opposed to get, you know, going into the Note 10. And that to me really just is not cool. So I would ask myself, you know, one, do my use cases require the expandable storage, the larger display, and the bigger battery? I mean, if not, I would probably go ahead and make the trade-off and choose the Note 10 over the Note 10 Plus and save myself the extra money. That or I'd consider waiting out the purchase for a few months so I could find maybe a better deal on pricing. Now on the flip side, if your use case doesn't require the S Pen, I would look at the OnePlus 7 Pro, especially considering the 699 price point. You know that, or I would look into the Galaxy S10 lineup if you want to stay in the Samsung ecosystem. That about wraps it up for me, folks. Let me know what you think about the Note 10 Plus in the comments below, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel for my full review of the Note 10 Plus when it drops. I am Mike Caputo, and this is Tech 24-7 TV. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next one.